Now, we have a very unusual service today. Uh, and full disclosure, warning, just don't tell me I didn't warn you. If you really understand what I'm about to teach you, uh, your life can be changed. <laughs> and, and I really mean it. Your spiritual life, family life, financial life, uh, any life, any part of your life can be changed. Um, but what I'm asking from you, uh, if you just pay attention, um, I was warned in the first service, it's not only you looking at me, I'm also looking at you. So if I see the blank looks, I might just give you a microphone. <laughs> so you, yeah, start asking you questions. So please pay attention because I, I really believe what God gave me uh, to teach you today has real big potential. Um, <clears throat> I want to take this one aspect of your life, my life, that we're all exposed to. It just many times because we don't know what to do with it or how to do it exactly, we might miss out. And I'm talking about listening. So for some reason, this whole week, I have unstoppable desire to, to talk about how to listen, how to listen right. <laughs> You know, like, have you had that one of those conversations? You're talking to someone, you're talking, and you realize they listening, but they don't hear you. And you go, hello. Uh, you're trying to get their attention. So we've all been there. <clears throat> as a Christian, as a Christian, as someone who believes in Christ, I think it is essential. Now, if you're wondering, why am I in this spiritual desert? Why is God not speaking to me? Why he's not blessing me? Why I feel so stuck? Why, you know, my marriage feels this way? Why this relationship feels way, this way? And all of that, <clears throat> I have one generic answer for you. Uh, you're probably not listening. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to be absolutely brutal and honest today. A lot of things we miss in our lives simply because we are not accustomed to listen. We are accustomed to hear information and let it go. So today I'm going to use the parable of the sower and I'll go rather slow about it and explain you some principles. I've been preaching about this parable who knows how many times. But now I looked at it and it made sense. First of all, it's a parable. Uh, the way you read parable, you're not only looking for facts. You're also looking, um, and the reason Jesus used it, he used an example that people out at that time, they knew what he was talking about, so they could relate to, the, to this. I can only imagine Jesus speaking about farmer and seeds, and everybody's imagination <laughs> turns on immediately, and they can imagine this man, hopefully with a beard, with a sack over his uh, shoulders, because that was the easiest way to carry. And he dips his hand into it, he pulls out seeds, and he just goes and throws it everywhere. I'm pretty sure, you, you know, that was the whole approach to the parable. Um, but using words and using, like, imaginary uh, like images, like uh, using examples that everybody knew, Jesus actually uh, tried to uh, bring the point across that was super spiritual. So let's just dive in into this parable, and then uh, we'll see what's going to happen. <clears throat> so the first part, parable itself, it's Matthew 13, verses 3 through 9. And it goes like facts of the parable. <clears throat> I'm just going to paraphrase real quick. But uh, Jesus uh, was teaching many things in parables. And he said, uh, here we, ha we have a sower. And he went out to sow. Uh, he here's fact. Uh, if I was to read the scripture. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you approach how I read scripture. So make it very practical. <laughs> because I, I never believe I'm, anybody ever taught me how to read scriptures. But here you have it. it. It might sound very basic, but it's very powerful still. So this is how I read scriptures. I open the scripture and I read like one verse, one chapter after another until something grabs my attention. 
I may not understand what it is about. I may not get any revelations at this point. But all I know and all I'm concerned, I need to talk about, uh, stop and read this uh, um, parable, for example. So that's kind of the case what happened. I, I knew exactly I needed to read this parable. So, and I start reading. So the first time I read parable or Bible, I just go over the facts. My purpose is very basically simple, and the purpose is I, at least, at least, what I'm trying to achieve when I first read the Bible, a parable in this case, I want to understand exactly what it's talking about, okay? So, because if I don't get facts straight, there is no spiritual meaning, there is no revelation, there is no nothing. You know, I'm pretty sure it happened to you too, as it happens to me. If I read something without <coughs> an idea that I need to understand what I read, I might just read something and I don't understand. I might read it again, I still don't understand. But I keep reading scripture or any other topic until I understand, until I'm sure I understand what it means. So here are some facts. The sower came out, okay, and he started throwing seeds. Uh, so what is that telling me? Okay, the fact is that that's how spiritual things work. God, God, sends his word, which is seed, and he keeps doing it. Let me repeat it again. You think that you don't hear God. You think God is mad with you. You think that somehow you lost his favor. You think that somehow you're in sin and because of that you cannot hear God. You think all of these ideas until you read this very verse that tells you that sower came out and he started sowing seeds. You know that nowhere... In this parable or anywhere in the Bible, I found any scripture, any indication that he stopped doing it. You realize that? That's the fact. That's what that scripture means. That means that God keeps speaking to you despite where you're at in life. You know, the fact that he was sowing seeds on the road, on the stone, in the weeds... Or good ground tells me that technically he does not care where to throw his seeds. That's a very powerful concept. You know what that means? That means no matter who you are, where you came from, what's your background, how much money you have, what's your family situation, does not matter all of that. You might consider yourself the less sinner or the worst person or the least gifted person. God doesn't care. You know what he keeps doing? He keeps throwing seeds. He keeps throwing seeds. When I read scripture first time, I want to understand facts. But the fact is, God is sowing. There is seed that has a potential, and there is three kinds of uh, soil. So that's what I get from that scripture, up to verse 9. Then Jesus, in verses 13 through 17, he explains the whole reason why he's doing it. Why he's speaking in parables? Because he's basically, I'm paraphrasing the scripture, but he's saying that Isaiah was prophesying. I'm telling you the same thing. Uh, there's people that present, they will look and not see. They will listen but never hear. But he's saying, but you are very special people because I gave you this ability to hear, understand, and scripture says, so I can heal them. So the reason, the reason uh, uh, why God is doing it, um, why I'm even preaching this sermon, because I'm deeply convinced when I sit down to read Bible or some other subject, say real estate or family relationships grabs my attention, I believe the reason why I'm even thinking about this, why I have this desire to dive in into this subject, because God is speaking to me something about that, that God uh, is bringing potential of that information to transform my life so I can have um, some results of it in my life. Now, the simple question that each one of you need to ask, 
okay, I'm a Christian, I'm coming to church. Am I going to hear what God is telling me or I am not? I am in that specific privilege category that uh, God is speaking and I will get what he's telling to me. Or I am part of the crowd, people that will look and never see, hear and never understand what I'm talking about. So the answer that I got for myself, yes, I'm a Christian. God is speaking to me. He gave me his word. He called me. He justified me. He saved me. He washed my life uh, with his blood and all of that. And I believe I'm, I am actually in that specific relationship. So no better scripture God is bringing me to, including parables and including any truth, I believe that God can speak to me through that. And then the third part that I want to bring to you, Jesus not only said the parable, which is basically facts, not only did he explain that you are special because I want to open it to you, then he goes plainly and gives them the revelation what it means. That's uh, verses 18 through 23. And he's saying this means that, this means that. And um, basically it's very powerful, so I want to read it. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, so the seed is the word of the kingdom, okay? That changes things because all over the sudden, I'm not only coming to church and here to the sermon. I'm not only sitting down and reading the scripture. It's the word of the kingdom of God, the truth that God is trying to implant in me. So I pay attention to it. So I understand. So I believe in it. And because God wants to do something amazing in my life. So that changes perspective. All over the sudden, coming to church and listening to sermons or reading like your private time with God, all over the sudden, it's not the task that I'm obligated to do. It's the opportunity for God to speak in my life the truth about kingdom of heaven so he can transform my life and bring the blessings that he wanted to give it to me in the first place. You understand the potential? It's like I don't have to read Bible, but I want to read Bible because every word I read, if I understand and I believe in it, now it brings the potential to change my life and have a life that I always wanted to have. That, that, that's very uh, powerful. Yeah, it's very powerful. So when you come into church and... Um, I mean, obviously, diff diff different soils mean different things. But think about this. When Scripture says that the seed that fell by the road, the first thing that happens, the birds come and they eat the seed. They pick the seed. And when Jesus explained what that means, he said the evil one comes and tries to steal it from you. Okay, now you sit in church I start preaching, and all of a sudden, you get all of these distractions. Oh, my gosh, what I'm going to eat after service. How I'm going to pay a uh, light bill. Oh, I need to get that house. I need to get that job. I need to marry that person. I need to talk to my husband. All kinds of thoughts. And you're thinking, I'm a bad Christian. There is something wrong with me. Why am I... All over the sudden, I'm getting so distracted. I'm in church. Physically, my body's here. I'm trying to pay attention, and I can't. And many of you, you don't realize because you made a decision to listen and understand, because you made an effort to come and listen to sermon, you became a subject to the spiritual attack. Because devil knows, and I hope you, you as Christian, you're going to get the same revelation. Devil knows that if you actually listen, your life can flip upside down. Because every word is going to get you in the kingdom of heaven. And every word that will be said is going to turn your spiritual life and eventually emotional, uh, uh, the life of your soul and your physical life. So it, it, it becomes very interesting. It's not like some old man coming and throwing seeds anymore. It, uh, you know, like, um, let me back up. I'll explain it to you. So when I listen, when I want to hear or understand scripture or understand any principle in business or 
any ideas. This is how I do it. First of all, first time around when I listen, I want to understand, uh, say, with my left brain, because that's the logical side of the brain. I want to know the facts. There is a sower, there is a seed, there is four kinds of uh, uh, ground. Once I get established the facts, I want to turn on my right side of the brain, which is imagination. A lot of Christians, for some reason, we are not to do that because we we told no, you, you cannot imagine things and all, all all of these teachings that we picked up over the years. But the way I'm looking at it, God created me. God created me both ways to think logically and imagine things. You know, creation, imagination, like you know, close my eyes and do mental pictures. Some people see colors and all of those things. Some people create music. So there's always creative side to us. So say you choose to be a Christian that only uh, relies on the logical side. It's good, uh, I mean, to some degree, because you're better than someone who pays no attention to Bible or any God's word. But what happens if you in that category, you know a lot of facts about God, you memorize a lot of scriptures, but it doesn't go anywhere. You can, uh, theology is built that way. Uh, I mean, uh, because it's logical. But then after you learn all of that, you go, why do I feel so empty? Why I feel like I just wasted my time? I know all of these facts, but I'm not happier. I'm not, I don't feel any blessed. I don't even feel any closer to God. Why? Because you started process, but it's not the full thing. You meet a lot of Christians. They've been memorizing scriptures since their childhood. That they, they know a lot of information. But the longer you talk to them, the emptier you become. Because, and you ask a question, how is that possible? It's the word of God. It's the truth, so to speak. But why do I get this empty? Some of you, you listening to me and you're thinking, I know so much. I've been to so many conferences, watched so many famous preachers and all of that. Why am I not making any progress? Because it's not meant to be the end result. So when you read scripture first time, when you study something, you study with your left side, you simply study in the facts. It's good beginning, but it's not the purpose in itself. So I read scripture, I got my facts, four grounds, sower is sowing, um, birds are coming, weeds are growing, you know, multiplying seed and all of that. So I got my facts straight. So I understand at least what this parable is about, but I don't stop there. I'm making next step and I turn on my right side of the brain, which is imagination. And I literally was sitting in a chair and I just imagined this guy he coming and he throwing seeds. Now I'm putting life to these facts. I, I just read the facts of the parable. Now uh, I'm putting emotions to it. I, I can imagine this guy is so happy, so excited because he's throwing seeds. That means there is a potential that it's going to fall in good ground. That's, you know, return on the investment. Like somebody's going to get it. Some fruit is going to, some life is going to spring up <coughs> and all of that. You can imagine when God is finally getting your attention and speaking to you through the word or otherwise, he's getting excited because he knows that every seed that he throws, every revelation that he sends his way, if you sit down and think about it first logically and then start imagining what the potential of it, you, you're going to be heading somewhere. So, and I'm sitting in my chair and I imagine all of these things. The whole parable becomes alive. But am I at the end of the destination? A lot of people will stop there. And <clears throat> I was talking to my wife and where she came from, that part of Ukraine, there were some preachers. And they would imagine craziest things, you know, like Noah's flood. And the water's coming, and these mothers with babies, and they stretching their hands, and they crying, at least take my baby. You know, like, you, you can go crazy about that. And everybody's crying in church, and everybody's so emotional. And they, you know, it's a good thing to uh, add your imagination to, to this thing, but it's not the end result. 
Um, I would say still go that route because if you listen to information, to parable, and you can imagine all over the sudden not only you memorize it better, but it brings the meaning that maybe you don't get it with your logical side. But again, the step number two is not the end result in itself as well. So I'm sitting, I'm thinking about the sower, I'm thinking about all of this, and all of a sudden I'm realizing it's not some guy somewhere back 2,000 years ago. It's not who I see anymore. I realize it's me. It's me. It's God so clo close coming to me. And every seed is the truth that he's trying to speak into my life, into not only my life as general, but every part of my life, my marriage life, my uh, church life, my financial life. And he, he's bringing these seeds because some of the areas is a good ground and he's throwing this truth and I receive it. And they just start multiplying and producing results and I'm so excited. But there's some areas where, you know, it's a different kind. You know, maybe I worry too much about financial uh, um, life and God is bringing revelation how, how to help me to have a breakthrough but I worry too much you know and all of these worries they, they stop the revelation I realize like ever since I got saved I got saved second year of the university going for economics degree I meant to understand economics business I always studied business but I want to be a pastor and I could not reconcile. For years I could not reconcile. How is that possible? How do I want to serve God? But I study business all the time. Until one day God was throwing, throwing. One time I remember I went to Charlotte to Morningstar Church. And this one girl, they had the prophetic session after that. And she came to me and she said, I feel like God is telling me that it's okay. You can do your business and all of that. I'm looking at her. I know I can. Logically, I know I've been studying business for years. I got my master's degree. But something inside of me is still stopping it. Because even though the seed is coming and I get in all the information, but there's no breakthrough because I worry too much. How can I leave this stable job where I make X amount of money and just start risking my everything? Uh, it just didn't make no sense. And then one day, one day... Uh, I was out here, then was leading worship, and God spoke to me, and he said, I give you the ability to create wealth. And, and I found it in the scripture, but it was like the breaking point. So in that area of my life, God been throwing, throwing seeds. I kind of logically maybe understood, but you wait until the breaking point where that seed actually break through the um, Satan cannot steal it, uh, worries cannot stop it. And then it just starts producing. So as I was thinking about this parable, so it goes like this. It goes left side, logical, right side, imaginary. And then it found its way into my heart. Once that word gets into my heart, it becomes unstoppable. Because you believe with your heart. You are who you believe you are. Not who you think you are. Not who you want to be you are. You are who you are, what you believe about yourself. Some people believe they're stupid. Now, they complain about it. They get mad about it when somebody tells them that. But deep down in their heart, they believe that they're not capable of learning things. They're not capable of handling money and those things. Based on their belief, their life flows out of it. But what I saw in this parable, not only did I understand that God is constantly so and not only I could imagine all of that all of a sudden <clears throat> on the way to church uh, God showed me like mental picture I can't say it was a vision but uh, imagine like a group of people sitting in a church and everybody's be you know like some listening to sermons some praising God some people their minds somewhere and they think oh I'm just thinking about that and all of a sudden uh, in my in my heart I, I see Satan coming, and people are not aware of it. They thinking of just regular service, nothing special has happened. And he comes and he steals every seed, every revelation that God is trying to send this person. And people don't see it. You, you know, the feeling that I got from this, it, it's just like, 
I felt the pain of the father. I, I was feeling like, no, no, Satan, you cannot do that. But this is the spiritual reality. Can you imagine Jesus coming to preach to thousands of people at this time? And he knows what's spiritual going on because he sees this thing. He sees demons come and trying to steal the world. And he's using simple parables to explain to people, maybe get to their mind first, then get their emotions or imagination involved because he's trying to communicate the truth that has the potential to change their lives. So that's what's going on. It happens every Sunday service. It happens every day when you wake up and you get this noisy thought. Maybe you should spend a few minutes reading the scripture and read the Bible. That changes the perception of it. You read your Bible and you pray not because you have to, but because I'm so excited because I know it's the opportunity for God to speak to me, to plant a seed that has a potential to bring hundredfold return on it. Will that change a thing? Uh, what if I was to tell you this principle is universal in your life? Sometimes um, I get curious about how my mind works, about business ideas, about real estate and all of that. But the biggest blessings that I've seen come into my life when in my busy life something grabs my attention, I start thinking about it uh, logically. And then at some point I'm realizing I can do it. I can do real estate, I can do business, I can do relationship, I can do church, um, I, I can serve God and all of those things. You know, once I accept it by faith, that's it. Now, uh, applications of it, because there's many applications of it. Can you imagine, like, you have your kids, and they little, they small, but they full of imagination. Their cognitive abilities not developed yet. They can't think logically like you can. But you give them a shoe and they will imagine it's a car. They play with the shoe without laces whole day and they will have blessed. Now you look at it logically. It makes no sense, this old shoe. But to them, it's the whole world. they consumed by it. They're they excited about this shoe. They make different noises because it's the, it might be Ferrari to them for as much as I know. You know, the fastest, but baddest car. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and we, we, we send them to school, and school is designed to develop logical side of things, not imaginary, uh, like ability to imagine and uh, feel and all of that. And they kill this ability. So what happens once the average person finishes school or college, they are trained to think logically, which helps in life, but they're not trained to develop the, um, your creative side. But in order for God to speak and do something in your life, he needs that creative side because you need to... Uh, understand, but you also need to 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 uh, to step into unknown. Maybe not physically, not be not explainable from the logical standpoint. Because on that other side, God is waiting for you. Um, let me give you a biblical example. You cannot understand Bible logically because it will not make any sense. How fish could swallow Jonah? Can you logically explain it to me? This one preacher, somebody, some atheist, asked him this question, and he said, I don't care if it's logical or not. Uh, I would believe it if the Bible says that Jonah's full of the great fish. I would still believe it. I don't know how to explain it, but I believe it. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? It, that's where we lose it. We're trained in school. We're trained in this public. Don't go to, to, to the creative side. Just stay with the logical side. Uh, that's why you have Christians in church where logically can explain a lot of things. But we're so scared to go into emotions. We're so scared to go into feelings. Why? God created you this way. And God wants to meet you. Make that stop and meet you on the other side. Um, let, let me put it in this perspective because there's a lot of materials coming out about... Um, uh, people trying to explain how can you change transformation? How can you transform? And they say this thing, unless you see yourself specific way, say healthy, say rich or married, 
unless you see, which involves your imagination and creative side, you will never change. Because you can only change according to the end result that you see. If you can see yourself being Christian, being on fire for God, being someone that God is using when you lay your hands, the demons flee, the sickness goes. Unless you can see yourself that way, you will never change into that person. Does it make sense? Unless you see your marriage as some blessed marriage where a husband and wife come together, they love each other, they care for each other, I mean, uh, there is peace in that family and all of that, you will never have harmonious relationship. Unless you see yourself as someone who, who's capable of doing business and successful and, and all of that, uh, you, cannot, you cannot do it. Like every man that ever achieved or had any kind of success in any area of their life, they are the people that actually saw them some specific way. About a week ago, I listened to the guy, and he talks about all of these uh, subjects. And he has a doctorate degree in um, behavior or something, science. Uh, and this is what he's saying. When he was still going in school, he decided somehow he got this idea that he's going to be a very successful writer and blogger. Now, he was still in school. And he said, I literally had to sit down and put myself in my mind in a position where I'm very successful and everybody wants to read my uh, books and listen to uh, my podcast and all of that. And out of that mindset... I, I saw which steps I need to take. I need to study. I need to research this topic. I, I need to pursue this media venue and all of that. Because that's how the whole thing works. If you listen to this sermon, okay, and you don't get the idea that God wants to multiply your blessings 160 or 30 times, I didn't do my job. Because that's what God wants. If you listen to these sermons and you don't get the idea that God speaks to you now and every minute of your life for the rest of your life, no matter how bad you sin or how far you away from God, I didn't do my job. You realize that the sower, when he came out, he was sowing whatever. He didn't care if there is a road, stones. Uh, uh, or all of the thorns and all of that. He didn't care. His job was to do it. You know, the most unexpected revelations you will get when you least expected it. You might be driving in a car. You might be taking a shower. You might be walking to... To, the, uh, to your job. You might be talking to someone. You, you might be working and doing something. In the middle of it, you get that thought. I, well, I guess what I'm saying, there's the more excited side of life that we're missing because we're not trained to listen for the purpose of hearing. What if I would tell you, like rough example, that God wants to give you a million bucks, but he's not going to just give you a check for a million bucks. He's going to give you the idea that's going to make you a million dollars. And now what if I was to tell you he's going to do it next week? Will it make a difference? Like how you lived before and how you're going to live next week. What if I was to tell you he's going to do it tomorrow? You would drop everything. And you would start paying attention to every little detail because you know that whatever happens to me, whatever somebody says, has a potential to make a million bucks. Can you imagine the same concept when you read the Bible or you listen to sermon or you come to church or you worshiping? God is giving you the same ability. What if we just change the whole perception? Oh, I don't care. This person, what can I get from him? Oh, I know what he's talking about. What good can come out from him? Oh, these people, I don't know what they're talking about. I, I know more. If we just drop that negative attitude, we expose ourselves to a lot of things. Now, let me get a little practical about this. Because uh, this is what Bible says. At least my Bible says this. Uh, there was Elisha, prophet. And there was a time where he needed to produce the prophecy. What did he say? Call me. What's that musician called? Are you with me? Who's? Harpist. Harpist, yeah. Why? 
why, why did prophet needed help of the music? You know why? Because music is artistic. Music is not one, two, three. You know, one plus one equals three. It's art. So can you imagine, like, uh, do you know why we do worship in the beginning? To help you out, to get out of your logical mind into your creative side of the mind. So the next step, God will start speaking to you and you will recognize that. Just that one revelation, people that on stage, does that mean anything to you? You guys saw a powerful tool in the hands of God. Because no matter where I came from, no matter what happened before the service, I come here once you start singing and playing. I know once I get into it, I get one step closer to God and I'm listening because at that point I'm listening, looking for the revelations from God. So how you can apply the same principle at your house, uh, you turn on the music, worship music. Sometimes when I work on the sermon or whatever, uh, I just put the earmuffs that people that cut grass use, you know, to block all the sound. But sometimes I put earphones and I turn worship music. Why? Because I'm trying to make that transition from my logical mind into my creative mind. Because I know once I do that, I'm one step closer to hear from God, to open my heart. Like if I was to tell you, open your heart, what does that mean to you? It doesn't mean anything because we don't know practically how to do it. But if I was to tell you the same thing but say, okay, make sure you understand the information. Turn on your logical side. But then turn on your creative side and imagine you... Uh, in the midst of this information, and you explain like you know, like trees, uh, you know, seeds throwing or um, whatever you do in this business. Once you get to that site, you're already involved emotionally, you're involved uh, mentally, and at that point, God can do amazing things in your life. So, one of the ways how to turn on your creative site is worship. Another one, meditation. You know, you sit, and Bible says you meditate on my word day and night. Why? Because if you take simple word and you read it, you don't understand, then you read, next time you understand more. But if you keep on reading, the, uh, like Bible has this ability, the more you read something, the more revelation you get. And there's no end to it. The stuff about this parable, I preached so many times, I looked at it, and it's just like I never did, seen this side. So you meditate on something, you think about business idea, you think about your marriage, you think about God, you keep on getting more and more results. Another way to turn on your creative side, just start writing down stuff. It's called journaling. What happens when you write something down, your mind slows down to the point because it needs to keep up with your writing or typing. So in other words, we think real fast. And sometimes we think fast over stuff that actually matters. But once you slow down and start journaling practically, like so many times, I, I feel I, I read the scripture and I feel like that's how it happens in my life. I feel like I need to start making notes. So I start making notes. Okay, so we're. Okay, who's this sower? It's someone who constantly does so. And okay, see it. What is the seed? The truth about kingdom of God. And I'm just writing down these things. As I'm writing it down, I can feel like not only I understand the scriptures more, not only I can imagine what's going on, like getting emotionally involved. All of a sudden, my heart opens up and I see the truth behind it. So journaling is very powerful in this way. Uh, uh, another thing that um, I suggest you guys do, uh, because God has a language that only you and God knows. To some people, it's dreams. Uh, like you go to bed, you have a dream, and God speaks to you while you asleep. To some of you, it's uh, your creative mind, you know, where it produces mental pictures. But for some of you, it's feelings. To some of you, it's prophetic gifts. Uh, it, once you get serious about this business, there's no potential how you can go. <laughs> Matter of the fact, you know people, inventors, that come up with a cure for cancer or um, create something amazing that the whole society benefits? None of those uh, inventions ever happened just on the logical side. People made discoveries on their creative side. 
Why? Because on creative side, you want to step closer to God. Like, you want your life change. You believe God called you into medical field, into business, into ministry. The potential of how far you can go in that specific field depends how much creative side you're going to open up to God. Like, the size of your ministry literally depends how much time logically you can explain Scripture and what God wants from you, but also creatively how much you can allow God to expand your, uh, your, your, your feelings, like, um, like your perceptions, uh, like your mental capacities, because God is right there. Uh, now, this parable is about the kingdom of heaven, how it spreads, how it operates. The, the simple principles that I'm trying to teach you right now, it's actually very spiritual. Like how many of you believe that you're here with a purpose on this planet earth? We all are. But how of you actually understand specifically what that purpose is? How many of you not only know what the purpose is, but how it looks like, like the end result. And how many of you can go back and break it down into the steps? I'm supposed to do this right now, then right, this right now, and all of that. That's the kingdom of heaven. The heaven sent you as a missionary down to this earth. And the way to communicate, it's going to be the word of God. It's going to be a random thought. It's going to be a feeling that comes. It's going to be an anxious from God. It's going to be a dream and all of that. I don't know about you, but when I sit down and just take simple scriptures like this and I start making the simple steps, logical explanation, then creative side of my mind, and all of a sudden my heart opens up and then there is no limit because I can go so far. We as Christians, we carry potential to bring cure to the diseases that never been cured or have the ideas that never been exposed yet. Because we are the children of God. Hallelujah. Like, I don't know. If you, if, you, if you don't feel special right now as I preach, you're missing something. You're still in your brain. And your brain is telling you you're good for nothing. <laughs> because that's eventually where it's going to end up. But you're very special. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes to get ahead, you need to slow down. Uh, what I specifically practice to get on the spiritual, more creative side, like I, I always think about something. That's how I am. For me to get ahead, I don't need to think more. For me to get ahead, I need to slow down and slow every thought and just get the peace of God. Because after that peace, I can hear what God is telling me even more clearly. What if you turn that into daily practice? Like, for example, start every day, spend a few minutes, think about nothing, just you and God. Yeah, you don't think about food, you don't think about your work, you don't, kids, nothing. You just think there for a few minutes, slow down, close your eyes, and think about God. And just enjoy that. You know how much blessing it will bring? Because from that moment on, your mind expands. Not only a logical side that you train to live by, but now the artistic side of your brain and spiritual heart is open up. I don't know, maybe, I hope I'm not talking <laughs> over your head. I'm just creating the possibilities. What's possible for me? What's possible for you? I'm very passionate actually about this. Because I, I believe we are capable of a lot of things. And I feel like I found the tools that I can explain and teach to people that once you start doing this, you, you can go who knows where. You know why worship became so popular in church? Because all of a sudden people realize I can sing a song using notes and using my voice and all of that. And all of a sudden I feel presence of God. You know why we feel more than regular prayer presence of God through the music you know why because of this principle now you're not only seeing words you're not only reading words music brings emotions it brings emotions out of you you turn your artistic side and once you get emotionally 
uh, involved in it, your heart opens up and your faith grows and you can start singing simple songs and you can end up feeling presence of God and crying on your knees uh, and receiving revelations or uh, God will heal someone. Why? Because that's how it works. It's logical side, artistic side, and then your heart opens up and always works that way. So, uh, but the more often you're doing it, the easier it is for you to become more um, sensible to the Holy Spirit. So at some point it becomes automatic. Remember when first time you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, I remember struggle. First of all, I didn't know about it, but then I find out about it. And then uh, people keep telling stories. It's so hard. It took someone 10 years and the, another person, it took 25 years. It's not what you want to hear, you know, when you're trying to pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But I was studying and studying, reading scriptures, talking to people, went to different services. And I was renewing, renewing my, because my mind needs to understand what's going to happen. At some point, um, I went to this one service and the guy who was talking about it, he simplified everything for me logically. And he said, we went to this one village. The grandma came out and she has, please pray for me. I want to have the gift of Holy Spirit. And the guy said, okay, go ahead and start speaking. And he said, she starts speaking. So <laughs> remove the whole logical barrier, like all of this, you know, that my logical side wanted to know the left side. And I understand, man, it's so simple. I got so excited. And guess what? Uh, he said, now, raise your hand, who wants? I raised my hand, and he said, now, come to up front. And I said, no, I'm not going to go. But it was too late, because logically, I understood it's simple. Emotionally, I accepted it's easy, I'm going to get it. But then my faith turned on, and I said, I'm not leaving from here until I get it. And guess what happened? I got baptized right there. So logical, creative side, and then my heart believed in it. Imagine us as Christians, we can be like, you can be whoever you want to be. You can be the happiest person and it doesn't depend how much money you make, who you marry to and the house you live in. You can literally sit down and through your mind overcome all the obstacles that makes you worry. Then they get emotionally involved with the feeling of happiness. And be, uh, but joy is the same root word as grace. So God gives joy like grace, not because what you done, do or didn't do. It's just like by grace. You, you can sit down and open your heart and be the hippiest. <laughs> hippiest. <laughs> uh, yeah, they stole it from us. <laughs> I just gave you the proof. Yeah, you can be the happiest person. Everybody in their logical mind might look at you and think you are crazy. People, Christians that live on logical side of Christian, they say it makes no sense. How can you be so happy in Holy Spirit? And you're just going to be super happy because you don't need to understand everything. You don't need to emotionally or imagine all of that because now your heart open up and it take your heart takes precedence over everything. Because if you actually read that parable, which I recommend all of you do, it's a matter of the heart. The whole uh, parable of the sower, all of these grounds, it all depends on your heart. Once you open your heart, that is what's considered the good ground. The open heart, not stony, not close, not logical, not, not all of this worried heart or whatever. The open heart before God is the best ground that seed falls in and it starts producing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I just love this. Uh, you, you know you're the best people to preach to. I preach and you smile. I mean, I tell you that honest truth, you, you suck because you're still logically too much and more. You worry too much. And you still smile and still love me. I, I love that. Uh, uh, so l let me summarize all of this sermon. How you learn to receive information actually super matters. Some of you receive it logically. Some of you receive it emotionally, but some of you receive revelations with your heart. Learn how to turn on your heart, open your heart, and it's going to transform your life. Um, now, if it was that easy, everybody would do it. 
So the homework is for you to learn about you. Somebody's telling you something good. You know it's good, but you're not willing to ex receive it. You argue with that person. You doubt what they're saying is true. But deep down inside, so sit down and figure out why I cannot take this simple truth. Like, you're listening to this sermon, and I know a lot of you, you see the potential of it. Because, I mean, it's something that was born within me. Uh, I get excited and passionate about it. I know my life can change, your life can change. And I look back and I see so many proofs of it. But some of you, you're still resisting. How is that going to be? Well, who is he? Why is he telling me this? Sit down and answer a simple question. Why are you resisting it? Is that because Satan is stolen something from you? Is that because you worry about something too much? Is that because you despise me as a person? Why is that? And you will come figuring out that all of that is still spiritual root. There is enemy that basically wants to steal it from you because once you get it, you become the most blessed person in your life. Uh, I'm just trying. Uh, I had so many notes, but uh, I guess them help me out. Yeah, can you? Then is that person for me. You guys have no idea how much he blessed me. And the worship band as well. Um, go ahead, close your eyes. I'm going to speak to you. <coughs> Explain you how to start listening to worship. Um, the only people that can hear my worship are the worship band because normally I'm turned this way. <laughs> and yeah, okay. The, the the only hope I have when I worship God, nobody, you know, I don't get them distracted because I'm very creative musically. I can never keep the tune. So uh, my creative side from the first note to the last, I just create my own tune, and I never can cr repeat it. You know, I'm just <laughs> that good. <laughs> But I, I still do it. I still do it. Why? Because I'm trying to overcome my mind. I am by nature super logical guy. My subjects, most favorite subject in school, math, algebra, and geometry. I graduated specialized like school with math advancement. Like everything in my life logical. And at that moment, God called me into ministry. And my struggle was for real because my logical side always stopped me. But then I learned that I actually have creative side. I can close my eyes and I can, for example, how I start praying before I even got to church, I would get on my knees by my bed and somehow I get this thought, it's noisy thought, Jesus is standing next to me. Later on I learned it was actually spiritual truth. but. God was doing those things with me. And I know God is right here. I don't have to scream. I don't have to do anything special. I can just whisper. And then I realized not only that, God actually in me so he knows what I'm even thinking. That uh, uh, brought revolution into my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm screaming. Yeah, God multiplied my voice into your heart. <laughs> uh, go ahead, close your eyes. Because I, I, I want you to try something. This little exercise, we're going to stop and then I want you to continue after this service, actually. But your mind thinks that God is too far. In reality, he's very close to us. So logically, accept the fact that he's next to you, that your body is his temple. He lives <coughs> inside of you, and his temple is inside of you. Holy Spirit searches you. He knows you better than you know yourself. So he's very close, and he's done everything in his power. He sacrificed his son so he can be this close to you. Logically, understand that. Okay, now close your eyes and imagine he's actually standing next to you. But scripture also says that the God that we serve, he's not an idol. What idol does, he can speak and he can talk. And he does not communicate. 
But if God is alive, he's actually speaking to you. So you are in his presence. And imagine, according to this parable, he's always throwing the seeds. You might, your mind might say, no, you're not ready. You don't know enough. You've done this. You've been sinning this morning. You screamed at your wife. You're not at peace with this creation. You, you didn't do something. That's your mind. Quiet it down because every thought is obedient to you. That's what Scripture says. We have this ability, ability to put every thought into obedience to Christ. And just turn on your creative side. Say, mind, you, you can wait. But I am in the presence of God right now. He's next to me. If he's next to you, he loves you. For some of you, you can say, God has just given me a hug. And it feels so good. I just feel like I'm home. The overwhelming emotions. And for some of you, God is actually speaking to you. And he's saying, child, I just love you. You are worth it. You are worth everything. Every effort I ever made, all the sacrifices I made, you are worth it, and you are so special. You were in my plan. Just continue pushing it, because somewhere on that side, at some point, you're going to start believing. Just like right now in my heart, my heart opens up. I know he's here, and I know how powerful he is. I believe he came here for a reason, and he has transformational power. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to speak to everyone in this place. Father, speak to them in their difficult parts of their lives, in their problems, in their issues, in their sins. Father, in the areas where they need to have a breakthrough. Maybe they thought every possible answer logically, but they didn't get that. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, you give them the answer that comes from the heaven, from the kingdom of God, the answer that will bring the right seed, the right revelation, and will produce the fruit, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me talk to some of you. Some of you got called into prophetic ministry. Some of you, you were called seers. Some of you, you were called to be prophets. Speaking in tongues, translation of tongues, all of those vocal gifts. But you have stopped for some reason. Now, your logical side is judging you right now. But I hear Father is saying, don't worry about it because now you're here that's all it that matters prodigal son came home and he had the perception how father is going to meet him how he's going to be worse than a slave but at least fat and father could not wait for that prodigal son to come could not wait to bless him with the gifts and robes and feast and all of that now when you're deciding, God, I have this gift, this prophetic gift inside of me. Father, in the name of Jesus, activate those gifts right now. Activate the passion, Father. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Take away every dryness, every doubt, any unbelief of their hearts. And you just fill those hearts with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now make a decision because what you're experiencing right now, you can experience every day for the rest of your life. And the extent of it can go deeper and deeper and your revelations can grow bigger and bigger. And business ideas can be more awesome and more awesome. Father, in the name of Jesus, what you started today, Father, continue in 2024 where we will be transformed where we will find who we are, what we're supposed to do, where we will produce the fruit for your kingdom, where your kingdom will get advanced. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You amazing God. Just go ahead and enjoy his presence. I feel some of you, 
you needed peace. Just say, God, logically I don't know how to get it, but I open up my heart right now. Send me your peace. Help me to overcome these troublesome emotions, these thoughts that bring fear, the fears that rip in my heart apart. Father, in the name of Jesus, release your peace because you are Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom. You are God of peace. Let your peace, Father, to be established in our hearts and minds from this point forth. Reset, Father. Reset, Father. Reset it into spiritual reality. Shirabada, Gloria, Hallelujah. Gloria, Gramana, Gloria. Hashiramana, Gloria. Gloria, Gramana, Gloria. Father, let your power flow, Father, through our bodies, through our souls and minds. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, break through, Father. Break every stronghold, any mentality into obedience to Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, Kramana Gloria, Father. Speak to these people, they're mighty warriors in your kingdom. The amazing children with the inheritance from the Father. And you, my Father, and you own everything. And I have that inheritance in you. And through sacrifice of Jesus, you made it legal for me to take it and use it in my life. Hallelujah, amazing God. Shiramana, gloria, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Allow yourself right now to feel happy. Allow yourself to receive from the Lord of lords and God of gods about all heaven and earth. This is how the kingdom of heaven is real, where it steps in into you, where it starts growing within you. Your reality changes. Your reality changes. I feel great right now. I feel his presence. I feel his love, his power, his amazement. And I feel like in him and I'm his child and I'm amazing. And each one of you, you are amazing. Hallelujah. If he is love, that love is within you. That's the most natural feeling that each one of us should feel. You are God. You are powerful God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hashiramana Gloria. Hallelujah. Now pray. If God gives you a revelation for someone in this room, you can share it after the end of this service. Just come privately to that person and say, hey, that's what God showed me about your life. I believe church is the community where encouragement of Holy Spirit we receive and we pass it on through the encouragement of the fellow Christians. The love that you receive, the power that you receive, just pray for someone, pass it on. And you guys are so amazing. Thank you so much.